the first step is admitting that you have a problem. And if you, if you don't want to admit it because inherently in the back of your head, I'm going to have to change, then you may not ever want to come forward and say, yes, there's a problem and this is where it is. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the latest episode of Strategy and the Virtual Controller, where we talk all things accounting technology, accounting business strategy, has client accounting services, client accounting and advisory services, accounting processes, and where my co-host and I, we share the insights that we're picking up along the way from working with accounting firms, bookkeeping businesses around the world. My name is Damien Greathead. And I'm sitting in a sunny Sydney, Australia, and my co-host, Penny Breslin. Hey, where are you? Are you up in Wyoming or are you back down in San Diego? No, well, I'm still in San Diego. They had right. a hellacious snowstorm in Wyoming. I won't probably get there until like the last week of April. Well, last week of April, which will be after tax season. Although the funny thing is, Penny, that there is really no tax season anymore, is it? It's just a constant, I'll say a constant slog, but it's, 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 a, it's a year-round process or a year-round season these days, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, we're already getting people filing extensions and getting ready to do that. Um, and as it turns out, this episode, it's it's the 15th of March here in Australia. So that's uh, that's one deadline down. But as you said, you've, you've got uh, folks already heading on extension. So yeah, it, it, it's one of those things that this idea of tax season, while we still give it a lot of attention, that the, the true reality is is work. And the tax season is throughout the entire year rather than these March 15 and April 15 deadlines, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, surprisingly, when we first started this podcast, I said, well, I don't talk to anybody about coming on board as a new <laughs> firm client after November 15th. Well, I can understand now why some people don't want to go work for accountants because just this month alone, four firms have contacted us like, how fast can you start working? And it's not necessarily some of it's tax work, but a lot of it's not. And it's because there's, there is no slogan. There is no non-busy season. There is no... And then, of course, they're thinking, no matter how many times they hear it from the MCPA, from David Leary and Blake Oliver, from everybody you can't hire, they still like, it's like, well, we tried. It's still a surprise. Or we just it's, lost somebody. Yeah. No, we just <laughs> lost somebody. Yeah. And why did you lose that person? So what but the funny it? thing is, is, is the, the question is how, how quickly can you start? And my, and I, I, I know some about your business, Penny and, and the team in Chennai and, and Shamila and Namila. And my guess is that you, you actually do have the ability to scale up quite quickly because of the, the process, the technology, the, the way that you've structured the team and, and the way you use more than 270 apps within your accounting firm. So I don't think the issue is how fast can you how fast can you get started. It's actually how fast can that firm get themselves ready. And and I'd hazard a guess if they don't have the processes, if they're not using the technology the right way, if they they don't have workflow or using it, it's actually it's not how fast can Penny's team scale up. It's actually how fast can the, the inquiring firm actually get themselves ready to work with to work with a, an, a, an offshore workforce in this 24-hour operating system. So I, I, I think it's less on you and, and more on these firms that are coming to you with, with staffing challenges. Yeah, there was one that got all the way to the onboarding meeting. And at the end of it, I said, no. I said, I'm sorry. We can't, we can't do this. I said, it's busy. It's a crazy time of year. And this was like in January. I said, all this is going to do is be another failure. And I can see now why uh, you failed with your prior efforts. And I don't want to be another one of your failures. And I said, come back to me when you've got these things lined up. I mean, they were supposed to bring on their main contact person for us. And she's like, I just found out about this yesterday. And, and it was like, We've been at this for a couple of weeks. And I just went, no, I don't want to do this. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thanks, but no thanks. And, but call me later if you want. And, and if you're still interested and you, st and you really, really understand that Excel spreadsheets and CC'd emails are not going to cut it. They're just not. It's not working for you now. What makes you think it's going to work just because you're adding on another office on the other side? It's just, 
not. And and how did they respond to that idea of unfortunately you're not ready to take on this process? Did they did they acknowledge it and and were they able to say okay look, we'll we'll get these four things sorted out between now and June and then we'll give you a call? They acknowledged it and they said they were sorry and we'll see. I yeah. don't know. They haven't contacted me back. I imagine that they're under the. Underwater right now. Under the pump, yeah, yeah. But, but we would have—they would have been underwater if they had used us too, because they weren't ready, and there would have been a deluge of questions constantly going on from my team, because they had no process procedures, they had no methodology for tracking uh, the work and where was it and who had it, and there was no like diagram on the football field at all. And it was more like a rugby game. Yeah. <laughs> and not that I like rugby, but I mean, you know what I mean? Where when they get into the big match and in the middle and the teams all just push against each other. And it was just going to be worse if you added us into it. Not bad. I, I was, I was going to say, and, and, and I'm going to hazard a guess again, not knowing anything about this, this perspective firm, probably used to working in 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 four in four walls of their office and calling down hallways and knocking on doors to find out status updates and status reports yeah yeah and and desktops <laughs> yeah and desktops and and, and 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 one of these interesting things that the problems that you have now and the challenges that you have now would only be further exacerbated by taking on a, 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 mm -hmm. a an outsourcing process yeah. Uh, so you, you're still not solving the the core problem of the business, which is this this lack of process, this lack of technology adoption, and 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 proper implementation, are you? Right. And there was one person who was using some of these newer apps, who really wanted this to happen, and he told me he's one of the partners, and he said the other people just aren't on board. And the thing is, if they're not on board. I can't help you. I can't make that different for you. Whether that's outsourcing, whether that's a new app, whether that's a whatever. Yeah, I mean, it's like I said, you could you could use some of these apps and find out you don't really need us. Mm. You don't know that you need us because you haven't discovered where the problem, or I think some people have discovered where the problem is, but you haven't. Part of uh, doing, the first step is admitting that you have a problem. And if you, if you don't want to admit it because inherently in the back of your head, I'm going to have to change, then you may not ever want to come forward and say, yes, there's a problem and this is where it is because you don't want to change the way you're doing this one thing that's causing the problem and so because you're comfortable in that. Yeah, and and sort of interesting. Like you, one of the one of the buzzwords that we're hearing in the accounting space at the moment is is transformative. Yes, uh, and that's how and, that's how this got started. So, and and talk and I think about that because there, there a lot of apps and all. The, I mean, the vast majority of apps have the potential to transform the way that you do business without a doubt. But it seems it seems sort of interesting that. We're very keen to transform to utilize the technology to transform certain parts of our certain parts of our work, certain parts of our tasks. But I don't think I, I think very few firms are actually transforming the way they do business and and, and actually thinking about this idea of transformation as rather than just a, a very sing singular part of the 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 bookkeeping process or a singular part of the advisory or tax preparation process, actually thinking about transformation and the use of technology and as a way of transforming the entire business. What do you think, Penny? Yeah. Um, I got into this conversation with a mutual friend of ours uh, a couple of weeks ago, and it reminded me of the story I told you about my granddaughter and the monarchs here in Lucadia, where I live. So about 15 years ago, there was a, a concerted effort around the people here in Lucadia to try to bring back the monarch edifice. They were pretty much ubiquitous in this area for a long time, but their main source of food is a milkweed. And with all the building and everything that was going on and various, for various reasons, the milkweeds were not available and the monarchs were going away. They weren't able to breed. And so now during monarch season, you see people, they've got the milkweed, they've got little, they're kind of like cloth cages 
for to protect the chrysalis. So one of my clients is a direct client, is a longtime friend of mine, and uh, we do her QuickBooks for her. And she has them in around the outside building of her her office, her location. And she brought, gave me five of them when my granddaughter was visiting. And Ember was four, and my daughter was still pregnant with her baby. And for several days, we sat and we watched these mo- these chrysalises transform into butterflies. Mm. And, and Ember said, and that's what mommy's doing in her belly, because pretty soon her belly's going to transform into a baby. And But the other thing was we talked about to Ember about how in order for this population of monarchs to be come back the way it has, and it's uh, it's stunning when it happens around here. The amount of monarch butterflies is amazing, but it needed the community to make that concerted effort to support the transformation of these chrysalises safely and securely to produce the butterflies because they were dying, mm-hmm. and um, so now we have it back. But it's the same with, I think, a business. And when I was talking to our mutual friend and he said, what could we do to help our clients utilize this app and better? And I said, well, what did they say to you that they need? He goes, they tell us it's transformative. And I go, well, that's the word. If it's transformative, why are they not taking that transformation that occurred, recognizing it? sitting down with the people that are telling them, this part of my job got better because of this app. And it, like, and I know, because I, I work with some people who use this app, obviously, we do. And we know that oftentimes when an app is put into the, the, the process that we're using, it's not across the whole business, right? Because so maybe... This is a bookkeeping app and it has nothing to do with tax. And yeah. or maybe this is an internal app and has nothing to do with the clients. Or maybe it's an external app and has nothing to do with, with everybody in the office internally. But it's transformed your business. And regardless of whether or not it's being used in another portion of the firm, does the whole firm recognize that transformation? That chrysalis, when it transforms, that casing goes away and it changes and it becomes that butterfly. That little seed became a butterfly. That little tiny transformation over here and maybe making bookkeeping quicker and easier and has allowed you to transform to do caps. It also does transform the tax division that's doing a corporate tax return because they're no longer waiting for information. So even though they're not using the app, that damn app over here, transformed your ability to get work done quicker. So recognizing that and recognizing that there's a change in process, there's a change in how people, it's affected the people in your company. That's something that happen, I think would be discussed across the whole business. That, wow, this one little thing has cascaded into a series of developments that allowed that butterfly to, to occur. So that one little transformation so now, if we recognize that this one little app trans, transformed not just this one aspect, but allowed all these other things to happen in a much more efficient manner, maybe we're going to do a couple of other things different. Maybe we're going to, one, let everybody use this transformative app in the bookkeeping division. Because some people go, well, I don't want to use it. I don't want to use it with my clients. My clients are in desktop and that doesn't work with desktop. Well, your clients are going to have to get out of desktop. Get over it. Yeah. So why don't you stop learning what this other team is doing now instead of waiting like we always do until it's crisis moment and you have to do it. I got a call from a company in Wyoming. They were looking for some help. And I said, I think I can ask, I'm going to ask you some questions. And they told me they were in QuickBooks desktop and... They were, he didn't know the version he was in. He had never looked at it. Their CPA only talks to them about taxes. And the bookkeeper they have, I said, can I ask you a delicate question? Why do you want to replace her? And he goes, I don't think that she's going to be able to handle what's going to come down 
in July when we're going to get this huge brilliance. And I want to be ready for it. And I went, okay. I said, have you talked to your CPA about this change? Have you asked your CPA how they feel about the work that's being done? He goes, no, why would I do that? And I'm going, okay. I say, I would have told you because you have 2024 that you probably have another three years before you have to do anything with your desktop. But because you also have this huge thing happening in July, I would suggest that you convert from desktop to online. But also, interestingly, why yes, aren't they, you this, talking? This one thing's going to transform their company. And and why aren't you talking to your accountant now, to your team now, to to to, to your trusted advisors and and to your business now? Because I don't, I don't know preparation for transformation and and all of these touch change management such a such a big thing that if again I, I in in my own sort of role I'm sort of learning the the communicate early is such an important part to get people on board to get people ready I I I can I'm quite comfortable operating in a state of flux but but part of my team a it's lot not. of my team is not so how do you yeah, and and it's it, it's also I, I think. This idea of transformation and transformative software, you, you need an environment that nurtures it and embraces it. And I, I really like that Monarch story as well, because it couldn't have happened without a community to nurture that process, to nur- yes. to, to bet, to come together, to understand the problem, to understand their role in how they could help solve it and and come together for it. And to your point, what you just said, that right now it is, it, it's, it's an amazing thing to see the do they do they hatch do they don't hatch what do they do well they, they kind of do they kind of like yeah all emerge or, or they yeah. emerge they emerge and it's it's yeah. fascinating and and but but that couldn't have happened without the community to support it and so if you think about your firm and and technology adoption and back to that original example one partner's keen and and the other two partners aren't don't really buy into it you're not going to be able to transform your business and and right. I think right now accounting accounting businesses need to be transformed need to evolve so as to continue to to grow and thrive and and do the amazing work that they do but because right now they're they're just sort of stuck in the grind of churning through compliance well they're stuck in the grind they're also it's not just always compliance that's really causing a lot of issues i mean you've got so much stuff coming at you even even if you're just if you move into some of these transformative apps, like say I do an online GL, like QBO, like Xero, like anything else, and now all of a sudden I'm connecting all of this stuff mm-hmm. and everything's coming at me at the speed of light and I'm no longer doing data entry, I'm doing data review. And the speed at which all of these apps are changing, they're actually changing at a very quick rate. So. I'm not only taking clients on fast, but my technology is changing fast and my people are getting overwhelmed. So where do you decide that there's going to be time to sit down and discuss the changes and how they're affecting everything? How do they Mm -hmm. affect your procedures? How do they affect your people? How do they affect your clients? How are they affecting your bottom line? Are you using some apps or paying for some apps you're not using? Are you finding that there are newer and better apps out there that can replace? Or are you finding, like, for instance, there are a lot of apps out there that are kind of merging. And if you're not keeping up, they're sending you, I don't know, my, my email is just getting worse and worse and worse, and I hate it. And it's like, don't send me any of your up. Didn't you see our update in your email? I'm going, like, like, I was trying to pay my mortgage the other day, the other two weeks ago, and I went, so let me pay it. What, what, what's there? So I called them up. They go, didn't you see the email we sent you? We sold that mortgage. We go, oh, fuck. <laughs> so, well, luckily, I'm ahead of it, but there was a month ahead. I thought maybe they wouldn't let me pay a month ahead. That wasn't the problem. The problem was they had sent me an email. And I think- like, What the fuck is spam? Jesus Christ. So I searched and searched and searched for it. And I couldn't find that email for the life of me. But which, I did figure I out how is- to get it. Uh, I, I was just going to say, uh, which I think is it. It, it re- again, it requires a quite different. It, it requires you to transform the way you do business in terms of the way that you integrate apps and into your workflow, into your team, into your training, and and sort of 
the the idea of of not having a, an app champion that the yeah the idea of an app champion or the idea of that technologist five six years ago was was very foreign maybe ten years ago whereas now the 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 firms that are really that are really transforming they have app champions and it's their responsibility to go go to the product up to update page to seek that out to then um, advise the team I, I know. Within your firm, you, you've you've got dedicated training every week. You've also got a, a, a culture where the team is is constantly seeking out those updates with the apps and then sharing those updates via Slack is to to let people know what are the new things that I've found and what are the new things that are that are we do the we, we do that, but it's still a struggle. I mean, it's a constant. There there has to be space given. One of the things is I've got 77 accountants over there. Mm. Accountants are like this. I, about a month ago, a, a client said, I want the, they, they asked their team leader, what can we do about getting more time? And they said, send it to request it from Penny. And so I talked to her. She goes, how come I had to request this from you? I've, I've had this before. And I go, you don't understand. They get like this, right? Just like you want an accountant to be. They're very focused, they're very focused, and, mm. and they're not paying attention to changes. And so they're going to need me to tell them it's okay for them to change their work hours with you because right now they give you four hours, right, a day. Yeah. So you're saying that you want eight. And if I don't tell them that that's what they do, they're going to, like, turn you off at four hours. You're going to get pissed, and it's going to take a conversation to fix that. So they... I'm telling you that I'm going to tell them this. This is how I'm going to approach it, da-da-da-da-da-da, so that you don't have that problem. Now, I know that my, we talked about we have a trainer on board and we do train, but I still see with these women who are very, very smart and know what they're doing, that they still get very focused that this is the way we've always done it. 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 And you sometimes have to slap them upside the head and go, no, it's different now. Did you not notice that change? Did you not notice how that app is different and behaving differently? No. Now go back and fix it. Because you can you can put all the the pieces into play, but we have to give them the space. So that's what that daily stand-up meeting is about. It is kind of like we do it once a week all together, but during the, the rest of the week, they have each team has its own stand-up with with Namilla and Shamila. And they go over in detail, has anything changed? Mm. Did you notice a change? They remind them to look for changes because they know and I know that the accountants and they're going to get like this and they're always under the gun to get something done that was supposed to be done yesterday. Yeah. So, yeah, it's hard and it's hard to give that space to somebody. And it was really hard for them. From the Miller and Schmiller to go, that's an hour out of our day that we have to take. And I go, it's either take this hour or look at what's happened in the last four months on some of the complaints we've had. And mm. it's because you didn't take the hour. My mother once said to my brother, one night's pleasure is worth a lifetime of pain. <laughs> Reverse that. Just anyways, they're great kids. I love these kids. <laughs> <laughs> But my mother's very old fashioned. This was a long, long time ago. Um, so until 45 years ago. So, but it just, you can either take and dedicate an hour, even if it's an hour a week to start, or, and say, you know what, this is non billable time or whatever. Or you can live with this, this constant, constant battle of trying to make life better. Because if you don't have a better life, you're not going to be able to hire this next generation. No, and and I think again, if you go back to the, this idea of trans, that this term transformative, how do you enable a transformative culture in your firm, and how do you how do you build build again build buy in for for this idea of we're going to transform our, our firm from from this to that. And, and and what are we going to do differently? We can all adopt transformative technology and and utilize one piece of that technology in in our workflow. But actually how do how do we take that concept of transformative to really change the way we do business, the way we do work, the way we help our clients, the way we 
keep our team engaged. I think that's something that that we that I think firm owners could spend have carve out some space for them to to really think about how do we take this take our business to be something that it is is much more sustainable and and sustainable and and can grow rather than just being reliant on me and and we'll, I'll, I'll sort of close the lights turn the lights off when I'm ready to finish. I I, I don't think practitioners firm owners are thinking that way. No, I don't. And it, part of it is that even they don't have the space and time in their life. Yeah, time. yeah. So you have to you have to just say, look it. If I don't take this time, I don't do this. It's like going to the gym. If I don't do this. It's just going to get worse and worse and worse. Well, one of the things I did is I started looking up how do you transform. Well, first defining transformation, and then using AI like Google's and and go okay now add another word to it, add another word to it. And I found some pretty good articles on transformation from on the finance of a company, on the on the financial division of a company. And I, I kind of just we have this new person coming on board. It's our first male hire. Oh. Sure. Okay. And so what I'm going to do is he I sent him several of these articles. He's so good. God, he's just really good. And he just gave me like several bullet points that, okay, this is what we're going to do on our next meeting with the team leaders. And he kind of like just bullet pointed it out. I was thinking we could add these bullet points to the notes in the in this YouTube. People can take with it what they want. I yeah. think Raj did a very amazing job on bullet pointing the, the things you can focus on when you want to acknowledge the transformation in your company and then make that transformation go across the board. So I'll just put those in the note. Yeah, perfect. And I, again, I, I think that's, it, it's interesting. I, I was looking at those as we were preparing for for our podcast. What I liked about it, it, it was looking at the, the the finance function of a business. And, and what we are seeing is finance playing a, an increasingly important role Whereas previously that sort of been in the back office as the number crunchers and 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 the the scorekeepers. Whereas actually, the smart businesses are recognizing the role of finance to really help model out future future states and and then strategize on how to achieve those future states. And and I think accounting firms can play that role absolutely for their clients, but it does require that that change in change in perception. It, it, it does require, a, a, a go back to chapter one of the book, decide what you want to be when you grow up. You, you probably can't, you, you can't switch it off between January and April because you've got busy season. You do really have to transform the way you're thinking about your business. And and again, I, I think we're, we're sort of at this juncture, if you will, and, and you, you read a lot of the press out there and, and accounting has a bad rap and, and people aren't staying in accounting and blah, blah, blah. doesn't have to be that way because actually public accounting can can play an incredibly important role in the success of, of business. But yeah, but it does require firm owners, firm employees to be quite brave and, and stick with that transformation. And, and it goes back to that our episode with Jan and and we talked about how long do you think we need to stick with this as transformation? And we, we sort of came at at least two years. So I mean like if if you're not but don't wait not, two years to talk about it. <laughs> no, 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 no. But 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 you've got to give yourself you've got to give yourself that runway, if you yeah. will, to make that transformation. Obviously, but but recognize that this is for the long term. And I think that's the other side of things as well is Back in my receipt bank days, people would people we promised the savings, and when people didn't necessarily the time savings, when people didn't necessarily realize the, those time savings within the first two weeks or three weeks or four weeks of sub- subscribing, they were ready to throw up their hands and 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 go back to the way they'd always done it because that was quicker. But did they ask the right questions of the right people? No, and and did we and I don't them? we didn't either, and 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 again we we didn't either, and we didn't we didn't. Back to a lot of the things we talk about, we didn't encourage people to create the space. We didn't create the long-term vision. We didn't re redesign or re-engineer the process or flag early enough that we'd have to re-engineer the process. We we tried to make Receipt Bank work with desktop, where I have a desktop plugin, and lo and behold, it's just not the same. So we 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 sort of we tried to change, 
but now a little bit older, a little bit wiser, recognizing that it, it's it's about putting the putting the 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 goal, the objective on the board for everyone to see, for everyone to buy into. How recognize. are we going to get? And then how are we going to get there? And then what's your role in helping us make this transformation? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and and everybody wants to know that they're adding whatever they're doing, whether it's the smallest thing of an allocation, that they're doing something for the good. Yeah. And and it's worthwhile. And it's not just something that nobody pays attention to. Because don't get it allocated properly. Don't get the milkweed feeding that chrysalis. Guess what happens? The, the, the knock-on effect is huge, but also don't have the community supporting the, the growth, the, the growth, the transformation. Of the milkweed, then, yeah. then it's not going to happen either. So, yeah, it's 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 the very small things, but it's also that bigger picture and that bigger community involvement. Oh, Penny, this right. has been fascinating. I've I've really enjoyed sort of. I think stepping out of the sometimes we get into the weeds of workflow and tasks and and that type of stuff, but this has been an enjoyable conversation where we sort of stepped back a little bit to our, to, to help listeners think about what does that word transform mean? You're seeing so much of it wherever you, wherever you get your accounting news. And now it's hopefully listeners are thinking about rather than transformative processes or, or transformative steps, actually embedding this idea of transformation into their firm so that they can they they truly can make that lasting change and bring those and and as as we see in in Lucadia bring bring monarchs back from extinction or or the brink of and and for for your granddaughter to in, enjoy that that site that is the monarchs emerging hatching from from their yes. cocoons every, every spring so that was um, so cool <laughs> thoroughly enjoyed it yeah all right cool you have a good well, ladies day. and gentlemen, if you've enjoyed today's episode, do us a favor, write a review on, on Apple Podcasts if you are, or give us some four or five stars on Spotify. Or on Spotify because that's On right. Spotify and Google Podcasts as well. We're there as well. And on YouTube, actually, yeah. as, as, as I, as I, it's always a bit weird when people sort of stop you and be like, oh, I saw you on YouTube. And I'm like, what? Wait. Oh, and, no. but, uh, and then I'm reminded that our podcast is also on YouTube. So, and if you have enjoyed today's episode, go back and listen to a couple of the other episodes that we've referenced as as well and please do share with your network would be greatly appreciative penny always a pleasure uh look okay. forward to talking to you next week all right you got it Mike. thanks penny